Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use the program flow functionality in Access 2010 to create macros that are run only when specified conditions have been met or perform other more advanced types of macro functions. The program flow functions replace many of the older features of macros found in versions of Access before 2010, such as the conditions column, macro names, and comments. So in this section, we will examine how you can use the program flow functions to create advanced macros. Now first let's examine the comment function. You can click and drag the comment function from the actions catalog and drop it into the desired line within a macro in order to add a non-executable line of text to your macro. Simply type the text that you want to have appear within the text box. When you're finished, click outside of the text box and Access will convert the text into a non-executing line of code that will appear within your macro. Note that if you add the comment into the wrong place within a listing of actions, you can click the move up and move down arrows that then appear at the right end of the comment line when you hold your mouse pointer over the action. You can also click the small x that appears at the right end of the action to delete a comment Note that you can also use the group function to create collapsible and expandable groupings of named macro actions within a larger macro. This allows you to create a larger macro with different named sections within it. To do this, just click and drag the group function into your macro design window from the action catalog and then type a name for the group into the group field. You can then add the actions to the named group as you normally would. Note that you can have several groups within a single macro. Also note that, unlike previous versions of Access, the groups within a macro cannot be called or run individually. They are simply used to organize actions in longer macros. You can use the IF function to create conditional macros that will only execute if a given scenario evaluates to a logical true value. To do this, you can click and drag the if function into your macro design window from the action catalog and then enter the expression to evaluate into the if field. Now if you want assistance in correctly entering the expression, be sure to click the Expression Builder button that appears at the right end of the IF field. This will open a separate Expression Builder window where you can add references to database objects and also enter values that should be evaluated. When you're finished creating your expression, click the OK button to add it to your IF function. Note that you can then use the Add New Action drop-down to choose the action to take if the specified expression returns a true value. Next, if you wish to add an else condition to the if statement, you can either click the Add Else or Add Else If hyperlinks within the if statement. Clicking the Add Else hyperlink will add an else statement to your if statement that will allow you to specify an action to take if your expression returns a logical false value. 
Clicking the Add Else If hyperlink will allow you to evaluate yet another expression if the first expression evaluates to a false value. So this allows you to evaluate many expressions and return a unique action based on multiple possible values. Now you can also use the sub macro function to add a sub macro within your macro that can only be called by either the on error or run macro macro actions. Sub macros must always be the last action shown within a macro if they're used. So to do this, click and drag the sub macro function into your macro design window from the action catalog and then enter a name for the sub macro into the sub macro field. You can then add actions to the sub macro as you normally would. Now note that you can set the reference to the sub macro using the property event sheet or by simply using the run macro 
or on error actions within a macro. So here we've put an action at the very top of our macro that says on error, go to a macro name. And the particular macro name we want is error handler. Error handler is the name of our sub macro that appears at the very end of our macro. And for our macro, it's going to have the message of the macro error and the description. Since this is an expression, it'll need an equal sign at the beginning. There we go. So at this point, we've got our advanced macro, which we can then save and use in the form. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.